Hello and welcome to this edition of our global webinar series. Today's topic is 48 volt applications. My name is Alexander Nebel. I am field application engineer in Europe and I will moderate the webinar today. We are very pleased that you find the time to join our webinar. Presenter today is Mawat Magdesi, our field application engineer in Western Europe. With this information, I hand over to Mawat. Hello, Mawat. Thank you for uh, your time today. Please tell, the short, uh, please tell us shortly about yourself, and then you can directly start your webinar. Hello, Alex. Thank you for, for your introduction. Uh, and uh, as you have mentioned, my name is Mawat Magdesi. I have a PhD degree in electrical engineering, and I have been with KEMET since uh, September 2018. I joined the team as FAE uh, to provide technical support for, for our customers in, in France, UK and Iberia. So here is the outline of my speech. Um, I, I will uh, present at uh, the beginning the context of the 48 volt systems, and then we will briefly describe the operating principle of uh, the 48 volt inverters with a general description of uh, uh, the, their electrical circuit diagram. And we will focus on the different solution that we can provide for the different stages of, uh, of the 48 volt systems, with the main focus on the DC link capacitors and on the AMI ferrite for the bus parts. And finally, uh, we will uh, give a conclusions and, and takeaways. So, uh, of course, the context of uh, the 48 volt systems is the electric mobility. And uh, today, the, the, the vehicle's CO2 emissions represents 10% uh, of the total CO2 generated by humans and 8% of the total, uh, total petrol consumption and causing more than 200,000 early deaths per year in the US. To overcome these issues, or at least to, to reduce their impact, the electrification of the vehicles were introduced as a step forwards uh, towards a, a more fuel efficient and an environmentally friendly alternatives. An example of these solutions are uh, the well-known battery electric vehicles, the BV, and the hybrid electric vehicles uh, known as HEV. However, the main drawbacks of uh, these solutions remains the cost. So uh, basically, if we compare the, the, the cost of uh, uh, the hybrid or the full electric vehicles with the more conventional, conventional internal combustion engine vehicles, uh, the price will be much more uh, higher. And um, if we look into more details and the distribution of the, of the price of these vehicles, uh, compared to the internal combustion engines, which is shown here in the blue line, we see that the main driver of the price of these vehicles are two factors. The first one is the, the, the price of the high voltage batteries, and the second one is, um, is the, the rearrangement that are needed on the powertrain uh, uh, due to its electrifications. And we see also from this graph that is only uh, by 2025 uh, that the electrical vehicles will cost the same, the same as the internal combustion engine vehicles. So shall we wait until the, uh, two, uh, the 2025 to start using the electrical or the hybrid vehicles? Well, in reality, the 48 volt systems were introduced um, to overcome this issue and to, to be used as alternative to the full hybrid uh, vehicle or the full uh, electric vehicles with a lower cost. But what are exactly uh, the 48 volt systems and what are, uh, what are the different types that we have on the market? So here uh, we are comparing uh, the different types or showing the different types of uh, hybrid vehicles, um, which are the micro systems, the mild hybrid electric vehicles, the full hybrid and the plug in hybrid electric vehicles. And um, it is interesting to note that what we are showing here uh, uh, is the 48 volt systems is one type of the, the 48 volt system that are existing. 
um, which is the P0 architecture, which is the more no, most known and the more uh, used on the market. However, there's other types under the development, and we see this trend coming uh, from some customers where uh, uh, the 48 volt systems are using the electrical uh, machine in a different configuration uh, than the P0 architecture, uh, which provides more options like the electrical driving and um, uh, and has a better uh, CO2 reduction. But here, if we compare the mild hybrid electrical vehicles to the microsystem, for, for example, we see that we will keep the stop and start uh, uh, configuration, but we will have in addition the electrical the electric torque assistance, and uh, the we will uh, keep the energy recuperation, will, which will allow the battery charging during the driving. However, if we compare to the other types of uh, hybrid types, we won't have the ability to, to drive fully electric the vehicle or to charge it from the grid. Uh, however, if we compare as well uh, the different CO2 reduction, um, uh, depending on the electrification level and the cost of the solution, we see that the mild hybrid electric vehicles uh, are providing a, a um, a CO2 re reduction uh, of the range of 14% up to 20% with a, a good uh, cost compared to uh, relatively good good cost compared to the other uh, types of, of uh, hybrid vehicles. And it's a, a, a good compromise between the electrification level, uh, cost and CO2 reduction, which, should, which make it uh, a very attractive solution uh, to move towards the electrification of vehicles. However, before moving forwards and see the electric uh, circuit diagram of these, uh, these systems, let's uh, see first uh, uh, how they operate and what are the differences that we will have in addition compared to the convention, conventional internal combustion engine. So at the left side, we are seeing the, conven the conventional uh, thermal combustion engine solution, and on the right side, uh, the MHEV uh, operating principle, which is the P0 architecture that we are showing here. So basically, what is changed uh, uh, compared to the conventional thermal combustion engines is uh, the alternator, and in fact, what we uh, what is added is that the alternator is replaced by a belt integrator starter generator and um, a 48 volt battery is added uh, in addition to the 12 volt lead acid battery and there is a dc dc converter so we have basically four elements that are added to uh, to the uh, conventional uh, uh, ice and uh, which will provide uh, more electrification to the car. But what are the different operating modes and how this will, will help the car to reduce uh, the, the CO2 emission? In fact, um, we can identify different uh, modes and during the e-boost mode or the coasting mode, the, uh, the, the battery will provide the electrical the, the needed electric power to uh, support the internal combustion engine uh, and provide extra power for accelerating and driving up hills. And in this case, the electrical machine will be operating as generator, so they will it will be co uh, converting the electrical power coming from the battery and convert it to mechanical power uh, uh, and support the engine. So, and here we see the belt that is connected the electrical machine uh, to the combustion engine. And um, during the recuperation mode, and this is when the driver uh, is braking, in this case, uh, the energy uh, is diverted to the 48 volt battery, which allows it to, to be charged. In this case, the electrical machine is operating as motor, so it's converting the mechanical power coming from the uh, combustion engine uh, towards uh, the battery. 
And when the motor, uh, sorry, the internal combustion engine do not need uh, any support from the, the battery, uh, the battery will continue supplying the DC-DC converter and uh, the other electrified system on board, like the e-compressor, the engine water pump, the engine cooling, and electrical power steering. So here is the electric circuit diagram of the 48 volt systems. Of course, we can identify the 48 volt battery, which has a BMS to communicate between the battery and the vehicle. We have the DC co DC converter that allows uh, the, the to supply uh, all the onboard systems um, below 600 watt. We still have here the all electrified systems, e compressors and other type. And when it comes to the powertrain, we have at first the MI filter, and then we will have the DC link. We have here the, the inverter, the inductive motor, and and at the end the combustion edge. But what are the different solutions that you can provide at, at KMET? Uh, this uh, this is shown here in this slide where we uh, we are describing all the type of product that we can provide for each stage uh, of uh, of this 48 volt systems from the EMS to the DC DC and different stages of uh, the powertrain uh, today unfortunately uh, unfortunately we don't have the time to go uh, in details uh, describing each of these component we will focus uh, mainly on this the DC capacitors and on the MI uh, ferrite that uh, we can provide for the bus bar as common mode choke or differential mode choke or even dual mode choke. Why we will focus on the DC link? Um, uh, the DC link capacitors here um, in this kind of, of systems are, are playing a, an important role because we have a low voltage system, 48 volt, and high power, uh, almost 15 kilowatt. Uh, for the PZO architecture and can go up to 30 kilowatt uh, for the uh, hybrid uh, 48 volt uh, inverters, which lead to very high current that can go through the capacitors. And also, as we have shown before, uh, the different operating mode, e-boost or recuperating mode. So um, the electric machine will, will operate in, as a motor or generator which lead to a different current uh, profiles coming through uh, the capacitors. So the capacitor will be subjected to very high RMS current and the capacitor that will be chosen need to be uh, fulfilling or able to withstand this kind of, of stresses. Also, we can, we, can, um, we can say that this DC link capacitors must uh, uh, have a high capacitance value uh, to to reduce the ripple voltage that can have uh, on the DC link. Um, however, increasing uh, or oversizing the capacitance value uh, will not be um, uh, helpful for the application because we will be over uh, we will add uh, an additional width and volume to the to the inverter, which uh, will reduce the energy density. So the choice of the capacitance value is very important in regards of the current capabilities, the, the capacitance value, and the, the chosen technology must be the right one. So how to choose the right uh, capacitor technology? And the best way to, to show you this is to, to work on an application example. And um, the, the specification were selected uh, uh, to be close to what we see uh, from the market for this application. For example, we will have an operating voltage from 36 to 52 volts uh, with a capacitance of 2.1 millifarad and a switching frequency of 20 kilohertz and an ambient temperature uh, uh, from 90 to 115 degrees, uh, depending on the uh, on the cooling system. And of course, here we see the, the high current that we can get in this application, depending on the operating mode so it can be really, really high. The operating lifetime is uh, quite the same that uh, we receive for, for all automotive application. So 15 year 
15 years of uh, estimated lifetime with 8,000 8, hours sorry, uh, as active mode. But what technology should we choose to, to have uh, to fulfill this requirement? Uh, basically, if we take the, the voltage as a reference uh, of comparison between all the technologies, uh, of course, we can offer uh, all our uh, capacitor portfolio to, to be um, uh, used here. So, for example, we can select parts from the film technology, from the ceramic technology, from the electrolytic and tantalum polymer technology. From the film technology, <clears throat> we can select the low voltage DC filtering, uh, uh, which are the families RSB, R60 and R66. And from the Dieseling low voltage series, we can select the GSN SMT series. And it is interesting to note that both of all of the series here that we are showing are using the PT as the electric because it has the ability of, uh, of having low sickness compared to other dietary types, which is very uh, helpful or efficient uh, when we are talking about low voltage applications. So this series will provide the best uh, efficiency uh, in terms of capacitance and volume. From the ceramic uh, series, uh, we can mm, select, or it's uh, better to select the class one, the electrics, looking at the at the the current and uh, and stresses that may um, endure the capacitor. So uh, we we will uh, uh, recommend the use of the C0J dielectric. From the electrolytic, we can select the actual series, uh, which has the ability of high current. And we can also select the SMD in the V-chip SMD configuration. And from the tantalum, we can select the, the most uh, known automotive part, which is the T598. Uh, but even though these, these uh, series uh, or different technologies can be uh, used for the 48 volt system, what will make the difference is their internal characteristics. Each type of, uh, of family has its own characteristics, has own capabilities in terms of ESR, in terms of, uh, of voltage and currents, and will lead to a different configuration, series parallel configurations, in order to, to fulfill this requirement. Uh, to understand uh, how this will impact this configuration, uh, what we have made is that we have selected uh, one uh, series from each family and made the exercise and compared what are the configuration that we will have uh, um, uh, in order to fulfill this requirement. And what we, you know, what we see uh, from the comparison is that, um, for example, for the film capacitors and the ceramic capacitors, they have high current capabilities um, compared to the other technologies, but the drawbacks is the capacitance. So we need to, to put several capacitors in parallel to reach the capacitance value and not really the current because we, we would be exceeding this requirement. So for example, we need to put 25 capacitors of 82 microfarad from the GSM to reach the capacitance and we will be exceeding the current requirement. And for the ceramics, we need to put more than 6,000 parts to reach uh, also the, the capacitance level. For the other technologies, the, the, uh, the electrolytic and the, the tantalum polymer, here it's more related to the current capabilities. So we need to put several capacitors in parallel to reach the current and not really the capacitors because we will be exceeding uh, this requirement. From this different configuration, uh, we um, we can consider that uh, the C ceramics, tantalum, or heating V-chip are not uh, a viable solution because either the number of parts is really is really high, or we need to put a series parallel configuration, which is not always possible from the customer side. From the uh, uh, selected or let's say more viable solution, we see that even with this solution. We don't have a, 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 a solution that uh, is able to, to fulfill all the requirements. We will be exceeding, uh, for, for instance, here we, we will still be exceeding the required volume. 
and the best solution would be uh, here is with, with our electrolytic capacitors with the PEG 226 microfarad uh, series, sorry, 226 series. And here we have put 20, uh, 12, 12 capacitor in parallel of 370 microfarad, 63 volt, in the case size 16 per 35, to reach mm, the requirement. But does it mean that we don't have a solution to reach this requirement? Well, in reality, we have a different solution that can fulfill the year. And this is done with our uh, new series or uh, future series that will be released and on the market. The first solution is with our hybrid uh, actual series, uh, uh, where we, we will be releasing very soon uh, four parts uh, of these uh, actual hybrid uh, capacitors, uh, and the, the 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 series would be named PHA225 or PHH225. It depends if it's uh, actual radial crown or actual type. And as you see here in the table, we have uh, one part of uh, at uh, uh, 40 volt and three part at uh, 60 63 volt. And what will differ in terms of uh, capabilities compared to the PG26, for example, would be the current capabilities and the SR values. So here, basically, we have the same part number or the same capacitor uh, value, 370 microfarad in the same case size, but the difference would be in terms of, of current and lifetime. So, of course, uh, since um, the, the the current will impact directly the lifetime of the capacitor. We provide this kind of uh, uh, of drawing uh, of curves, which shows the the lifetime that we will get at, at an application uh, voltage, uh, so application temperature, and for a given uh, rated current. And basically, uh, we work uh, on the mission profile uh, since uh, there is no current constant configuration during all the lifetime. So we evaluate the different uh, 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 mission profiles, uh, stages, and the modes, and we can mm. state if the capacitor can withstand or not the mission profile. So if we compare uh, the PG226, the, the 370 microfarad that we used in our application example with the uh, same uh, case size and same capacitance with our PHA-225 series, the hybrid series, we see that we will get um, a, a higher current capabilities, almost the double current, the same case size, same uh, ambient temperature, which lead at the end to use 50% uh, less number of capacitors to reach the same performance. And this is coming basically from uh, the performance of this kind of, of capacitors with, uh, with frequency and, and temperature. So as, as we see uh, here in this graph, uh, where we are plotting the SR with frequency and the SR with temperature, we see that the SR is, is much lower than the actual hybrid type and is more stable uh, with temperature for different frequencies. So if we uh, get back now to the same example, uh, application example, and we use the actual hybrid, the 370 microfarad, uh, 63 volt and 16 per 35. In this case, we will need this uh, half of the number of the component uh, to reach the, the requirement. And you see that we will still fulfill the capacitance requirement. We will we are fulfilling the current and and. Uh, we fit in the required volume. Uh, to understand better uh, on this um, this difference, uh, let us uh, compare uh, or understand what is the difference inside the capacitors between the aluminium electric type, the standard one, and uh, the hybrid type. So at the left side, we are uh, uh, showing the, the conventional aluminium electric capacitors where we have the anode, the electric, the electrolyte, and the cathode here. On, on the right side, we are showing the polymer type. In this case, what is different with the conventional aluminum electric type is the electrolyte, electrolyte, which is replaced with polymer. Uh, 
and the polymer is um, is a more conductive uh, 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 type where we see here on the uh, on the uh, in the middle uh, chart we are comparing the thermal uh, the electric conductivity of uh, of the electrolyte with the conductive polymers and we see that it is more almost uh, 100 to 1000 times more uh, electric conduct conductive which leads that uh, which means that we will get uh, uh, 100 to 1,000 times lower ESR, uh, and uh, this will lead to, to an improved performance in, in current. And um, looking at the, the character, character, uh, characteristics and advantages of both technologies, uh, the, the hybrid type were introduced, and uh, uh, they are they are basically taking all the advantages from both technologies, so they are um, having the good um, um, electric conductivity coming from the polymer type, and and they are taking the low uh, leakage current from the electrolytic type. The second option that we can use is the hybrid polymer in in a V-chip configuration. Uh, which is also from from uh, internal construction is the same as the the actual hybrid, uh, but here it is an SMD configuration, and the the series was this series was released uh, on the last uh, uh, the beginning of uh, of October, um, uh, and this series is called A seven hundred eighty, and uh, at this. Um, uh, at this time, we have released two part numbers, the 56 microfarad and the 100 microfarad, 63 volt. And here we are sh um, showing the characteristic of these two part numbers. And it is interesting to note that um, we have two types of configuration. We have the standard SMD type and the anti-vibration version. In this case, we will have this type of plastic uh, covering, uh, uh, covering uh, the, the component uh, body. And this is a type of requirement that we get sometimes from our customers that are requiring a high vibration performance. And with this uh, configuration, we are able to guarantee up to 30J. Uh, but of course, these will not uh, be the only part numbers that we will release. Uh, this is the roadmap of uh, all the, the technology of the A780 series. So we released the 56 and 100, but all the other part numbers will be released on a, a monthly basis or quarter basis. Of course, when we are using hybrid technology, as mentioned before, we will have lower ESR and thus we will have lower self-heating when subjecting the capacitors for the same uh, current. And this is what we are comparing here. We are comparing the hybrid to a trilytic type and we see that we have almost 15 degrees of, uh, of self-heating difference between the two types. Uh, the, the third option, possible option uh, to, to use um, uh, uh, for this application is the ultra-high CV axles, uh, which uh, also were released recently. So we have released, released two uh, series, the PG227 and the PG228 which are, um, uh, let's say, uh, an upgrade or uh, improved version of the PG225 and PG226. And we, uh, what this change is really uh, to increase the capacitance in the same volume. Uh, so uh, the PG227 is given uh, for a temperature up to 125, and if you use it for uh, 150 degrees, a derating much must be applied on the voltage. And the PG228, uh, here we have the series that is given uh, for for 150 degrees without without derating. And the application, um, typical application for this type of capacitors is really the 48 volt inverters. But what are the advantages? Um, the advantages really are the capacitance. Um, capacitance efficiency, so we will double the capacitance in the same volume compared to the previous uh, series. So, for example, uh, the PG228 will have the double capacitance as 
the PG26 for the same case size. Uh, for the same case size, we will have the double of the capacitance. And here we are comparing the average volumetric capacitance um, between the PG228 with the old version and compared to our best competitor. And we see that uh, our competitor had better performance for the six uh, for the 63 parts, but today with the PG228, we will be or uh, will have better for performance than our best competitor. Uh, this is also the uh, true for the PG227. And uh, on the right side of the of the slide, we are showing uh, the average volumetric ripple current capabilities. And in this case, we see that also that the, the PG228 will have better current capabilities than our previous series and our best competitor. So we have many advantages with this series, um, better current, better capacitance, same volume, which lead to, to the use of lowest number of capacitors for a given application. Here uh, also we are comparing the energy density uh, of the PG227 and PG2028 compared to the best competitor and the previous series. And here again, we see that we will have the best capabilities in the market today. The last solution, which is uh, also really interesting for this kind of application, is the modular solution. And um, uh, Kemet is working uh, on the development of, uh, of uh, a block um, solution, which means that we will provide not only the single elements, but we will provide all the overall solution. So the capacitors with the bus bars with the cooling systems. And this kind of solution, um, uh, as you may uh, understand, is fully customized solution. So it depends on each uh, application configuration of, of a customer. So we need to work very closely uh, with our customers, with their uh, mechanical uh, and uh, all the the, uh, the surrounding uh, uh, elements uh, of the capacitors. So we, we work really in, in collaboration with the customers. But the, the good point of this kind of, sol of solution is that we will provide a full solution. So the, the capacitor connection and the configuration will be fully tested and guaranteed before, uh, before sending it. And now we can uh, move on to the, to the EMI filter. And uh, we wanted to focus on the ferrite uh, uh, for bus bars. And um, uh, of course, we can also provide the X and Y capacitors for this for this EMI filter on this stage of uh, the powertrain inverter. And um, today we we propose the EMI uh, filter for for bus bars basically because we have a high current application and um, uh, and the um, to, to be able to handle this kind of currents, uh, it makes um, more sense to, to provide the ferrite on bus bars uh, to be able to, to handle this, these current capabilities. So in terms of material, we can work with different types of, uh, of ferrite, like the manganese type or the nickel zinc type, uh, depending on the application uh, operating frequencies and the, the, the required attenuation. And how we work on this kind of, of product, uh, generally we receive uh, the, the compliance requirements from, from the customers. So what are the available uh, mechanical dimensions? Uh, what is the required attenuation? Uh, if it's a, a common mode or differential mode. And then we, uh, we have uh, an internal models that we can uh, simulate all these requirements requirements and then we can convert them and find the best solution to, uh, to, to present to you. Uh, uh, so in terms of, uh, of materials, I've, as we have mentioned, we have different types of material. Uh, if it's nickel zinc or manganese zinc. Um, and here in this table, we are comparing or presenting the manganese zinc materials, which are the 5-HT and 7-HT. The difference is, uh, is the, uh, the permeability of the material. So here the 5-HT has a permeability of uh, 4,500 and the 7-HT is 7,000 uh, U. 
And the second point is uh, um, uh, the saturation capability. Uh, so here we see that both have almost the same uh, level or range of saturation. And the difference also would be on the, on the th temperature, saturation, or the current temperature. And as mentioned, for this kind of application, uh, one turn solution, which is the bus bar, is more uh, suited for, for these high current uh, requirements. <clears throat> Otherwise, we will get into saturation uh, faster uh, the, the, the uh, magnetic material. In this slide, we are comparing the, the temperature the performance of the 5-HT and 7-HT uh, with other type of material. And uh, we see that uh, what we what differs from, from other material is their, their stability with temperature and their saturation capabilities. <clears throat> we are also working on, uh, on the 10-HT, which will have uh, a higher probability, probability so 10 HT will basically have 10,000 mu. So, um, um, what type of solution we can propose? So, of course, we can uh, propose uh, the differential mode, the common mode choke, and uh, the dual mode choke. And this will uh, will be defined by by the configuration of the ferrite material around the, the conductor. So it can be differential mode in this way, or common mode, or, or dual mode choke. And then here we will have an additional ferrite that is passing through uh, the two conductors to enhance the, the differential mode. But of course, it will depend on the, at the end on the application requirement, uh, and we will provide the best solution. So basically, we, we received the drawing from the customers and the requirement in terms of attenuation. And then we make a simulation with our ANSYS uh, software. And we can uh, say that uh, if this capacity, uh, this uh, uh, fried material will, will be the best, uh, best configured or it need, it need to be changed or uh, in a different configuration. And then we can provide different type of solution. Here we are showing the differential mode, the dual mode, or the common mode. Uh, as a conclusion and takeaway, so uh, the, the mild hybrid ethical vehicle with a 48 volt system is one step forward towards the e-mobility, and this is uh, coming a reality. We have um, several projects uh, showing uh, this, uh, and this is mainly dependent or uh, it is really related to, to its, uh, to its uh, simplicity of integration uh, and uh, the mass of component is relatively small, so the impact on the total weight of the vehicle is limited. And the overall system cost to performance, uh, taking down the, the fuel efficiency and uh, the, the torque boost is very competitive. Uh, from uh, our portfolio, we can provide solution for the different uh, stages of the 48 volt um, uh, mild hybrid. Uh, and uh, since the trend uh, of the high current and high miniaturization is required, uh, the desealing capacitors can, can all on the reach with our new hybrid technology, mm -hmm. whether in the actuals or SMDV chip or with our ultra-high CV capacitors. We have also uh, a solution with, uh, for the AMI filter with customized ferrite bus bar. And uh, an important point to mention is Schemat makes its own ferrite material and we can adapt the material type and shape to the, cap to the customer application. And uh, with this, I want to, to thank you and I'm open to questions. So Mawad, thank you for your time. Um, very interesting presentation. I also learned something new. Uh, for this moment, we have no questions, but to all attendees, like always, you can ask uh, your local sales or Mawad directly. Um, please let us know, and you can also use the possibility uh, to contact us via our homepage. And with this, I want to say thank you for today's webinar, for your time, and thank you, Mawad, for presenting, and I hope to see you soon again.
Thank you, Alex.